Now on to the men's draw at Lakeside and Connor Scott. I don't know if that's someone that you know, Matthew, the six to one favourite in the men's draw, which looks wide open. Is Connor the man to beat or do you put someone else as the favourite? Ah, oh, Connor Scott, yes, I've heard of him. <laughs> uh, right, so just uh, the declaration of interest. We have to say it, Connor and I are friends, so um, that is an issue when I'm talking about this yeah. question. I think it's too open, really, to uh, you know make standout favourites for the reasons that you have already stated um it is so open and anyone can be anyone yes it's a cliche but i really do think that is the instance um in this case i think if you look uh, i think a good place to start in terms of the men's draw is looking at those guys that are actually in uh, you know pdc action because lest we forget those that have won a tour card in January, rather, you know, quote unquote controversial in some quarters, of course, because some people opted not to go to Q School so they could play at Lakeside. Then it got postponed. Some people then, who had already qualified for Lakeside, then won a tour card. Only Ross Montgomery didn't choose to take it up, uh, the place at Lakeside, because they've now been granted uh, this one off extension. And that's a good place to start because they're obviously playing at a high level. And just looking at the German. Pro Tours, well, perhaps surprisingly, one of the players that, that, that we, perhaps we should be looking at and giving more attention to is Scott Marsh, because actually of all of those players that are, will be playing at Lakeside that played in Germany, he won the most matches. He won three. He beat, uh, including Devin Peterson and Madis Rasmus. Rasmus, of course, had a, a fantastic run on, on that semi-final and Scott Marsh beat him on the Sunday. Um, Brian Roman, Nick Fulwell, Van Dongen and Connor Scott all had one win each. And Tricoli, meanwhile, had no wins. So, you know, that's a good place to start, I think. I think obviously what this is begging for in terms of the men's draw is, is the sort of the creation of a new star or two uh, to really sort of, you know, carry the flame um, for the, the WDF. It'd be obviously be interesting to see if any of those guys do actually go on and, and win it and, and whether that sort of means they can kick on in terms of the PDC. I think connor has been given that sort of favourite status because he's fared the best out of those guys so far uh, on the Pro Tour because he had that semi-final run earlier on in the year. But, you know, that's the beauty of, that was always the beauty of Lakeside in the past, new names coming through. Um, and I think that's, you know, a golden opportunity here yeah I, I think you're right there and i think you look back to the last days of the bdr okay not the 2021 but the previous three years to that you had glenn durant as a, a huge favorite i think some years that at least the last of those three years that he won the title he was a, an odds-on favorite with the bookmakers so he was going in as the, the man that everyone had to stop basically if they were to become a, a world champion so he won it three years in a row 2017 to 2019 2020 Trying to think back that far now, it feels like a, a long time ago, but that was a fairly open world championship, I think, coming in. I think you had Jim Williams, who won the world trophy the previous year, so he was a, a major winner coming into it. He was probably one of the favourites. John O'Shea won the, the World Masters, although he didn't play too much of the tour. He would have been up there in, in, the, in the betting as well, but that was still a, a fairly open tournament. But this one, I mean, you just look at the odds and Conor Scott at 6-1, to one, the favourite. You've got someone like Leonard Gates, who you've just heard from. He was 200 to 1 this time last week, and a few people mentioned it on social media. He's now 20 to 1. That shows how quickly those odds can change in, in this market. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of players in there that are, are well close in the betting, and, and Connor is the, the one at the top there, 6 to 1. I think they're looking at the PDC form, aren't they? Semi finals on the Players' Championships, one of the early weekends. He is one of the players, as you say, that's got that tour card. He's had a lot more match practice at the elite level heading into this tournament so with that you, you've got to say he's going to be one of the, the favorites and of course he's, he's had that taste of the big stage we were there in Minehead a, a few weeks ago and we, we saw him on that main stage get a win so he's got a little bit of main stage experience under his belt and that's one of the, the factors that you've got to take into this tournament is as I said you are going to see a lot of new faces you're going to see a lot of players making their world championship debut and I was trying to do a a quick head count um, earlier. I think it's probably around half the field, maybe even a little bit more than that, that haven't played in a, a steel tip world championship before. And there's probably more that haven't played at Lakeside before. So you've got a lot of unknown quantities in there going into this. So for me, I probably wouldn't put Connor Scott as the favourite. I'm probably looking at someone that's maybe got a little bit more stage experience, maybe someone that has played at the Lakeside before. And for me, I'm looking at a, 
a fellow PDC tour card holder, I'm, I'm looking at Cameron Menzies, and he's the the second favourite at the moment, going off the uh, the Ladbrokes uh, betting. He's eight to one joint second favourite, and he's someone that he didn't play in the the Pro Tours at the weekend in Germany. He decided to have a, a weekend off, and you look at the averages for the the Players Championships this year. He's 32nd, 94 and he's picked up a lot of scalps already this year. He's beaten Michael Van Gerwen, Jose de Souza, Simon Whitlock, Mensa Sulevich. And he's not too far behind Connor Scott on the order of merit. I think it's only a few thousand pounds. And as I say, he didn't play this past weekend. So he's someone that has got a bit more experience than Connor on the main stage. We've, we've seen him play in a world championship before. We've seen him play the Grand Slam before. So for me, I'm, I'm probably putting Cameron Menzies as, as my favourite. But aside from that, you're probably looking at someone like Martin Adams, who is still going strong. And uh, he's got bags of, of experience at the lakeside. He's only won it three times and he's played... What was it 26 world championships so we all know what he can do and he's still doing it at that level so yeah you've got players like him you've got players like Luke Littler who's the other side of the scale on, on the age uh, on the age category and he's making some big strides at an early age as well so for me I, I probably wouldn't put Connor as the, the favourite I'll go with Cameron Menzies but like, like I mentioned earlier I, I think there's so many names that you could pick out you could probably pick out eight names now and they might all be out before the last 16. Yes, it is very, very open, isn't it? So in terms of uh, those uh, those early rounds, um, what do you make of the fact that it is, uh, you know, an extended field this year? Now, which of the first round ties are you most looking forward to? Well, Burton and I, we discussed this question when the draw was first made, and that was back in December. So four months ago since uh, then, and we, we've now come to the tournament, and there's been a, a slight change in the draw, the the order of play because we've seen a few players withdrawn. We've seen some players move into the seed. So there's been a few changes, but one game which has definitely not changed. And I'm glad about that because it's the game that is still going to open up the tournament, the first WDF World Championship. And it is Martin Adams against Jared Cole. You've got Martin Adams, 65 years of age. He's 27th World Championship. He's back on that lakeside stage for the first time in four years, going up against someone that is one of those debutants, Jared Cole, 21 years of age. He's now the ADC Global World Champion, the uh, the title that was formerly the MAD World title. He's still the holder of that. So he's had a, a little bit of uh, stage experience recently. He's making his uh, his debut in the tournament and going up against someone that has, has been there and done it. That is, uh, you know, a battle of the, the generations, if you like. Are we going to see a, another win for Martin on that lakeside stage? Or are we going to see Jared Cole make a name for himself in, in the very first game? That's a game that I'm really looking forward to. And Looking beyond that, I mean, I've got to give a mention to another name that we know a lot about, Paul Hogan. Of course, we saw at the UK Open, had his uh, his Riley's qualifiers top on in the end. It, it took a bit of sorting out backstage, but we, we saw him in that red polo shirt at the end and he had a, a couple of wins on that afternoon session. And you look back to his last World Championship campaign two years ago in the BDO and there was probably a point in that week at the O2 when you were thinking, could Paul Hogan go all the way? Could he become a World Champion? Because we'd seen him post 97 99 averages back to back and there was a lot going on behind the scenes that week a lot of tension about the prize fund about the future of the bdo a lot of players thinking about going to q school there was none of that for paul hogan he was playing carefree and i think that is still the case for paul i think he's just turning up and enjoying his darts and if he can produce his a game he's going to be a, a match for anyone in the field and going up against Justin Thompson, a, a tricky customer on his day. And he, he's someone that pre-pandemic we were seeing quite a bit of on the BDO circuit. We were seeing him in the World Championships. We were seeing him in the, the World Trophy quite often. We've not seen too much of him recently, but he's someone that can cause problems. You look back to 2020, he pushed Wayne Warren, the eventual champion, all the way to a fifth set. So he'll be up for, for claiming a scout. That's a game that I'm looking forward to. And, and the last one I mentioned from the first round ties, Got to, of course, mention our, our good friend Dave Parletti, who's been wearing the weekly darts cast sticker for us over the last few years. We've not seen too much of Dave recently, but it's going to be nice to see him back on that lakeside stage. We uh, know how much that venue means to him and, and that stage as well when he made his debut in 2019. And going up against Sean McDonald, again, someone that we've, we've got to know well last year. We've had him on the show and this is come back in darts and came very close to getting that tour card on the Challenge Tour last year. Just missed out to Jim Williams in the end, but he's got that debut at Lakeside and, and like you he was unsuccessful at the Lakeside qualifiers but that's because he didn't have to play in it in the end he, he got that call up so that's a, a game I'm looking forward to and potential to be a, a battle of the walk-on to that one as well. 
Yes, I'll just pick out one one or two more uh, without risk of uh, naming the whole draw <laughs> between the two of us. Uh, but obviously, uh, James Richardson, Sebastian Stay, I think that could be quite uh, good. And uh, it sort of goes under the radar, I think, those two players. So that, that could be uh, a closely fought contest. And perhaps Andreas Harrison and Laszlo Kadar as well could, uh, could be an interesting um, tussle if I had to pick two out. And, of course, a shout out for John Scott, who, you know, is the most travelled player, arguably, on the tour. Has worked so hard for an opportunity uh, to be at Lakeside, taking on another qualifier who came through um, that that qualification tournament, Johnny Haynes. So uh, that should be an interesting contest as well. 